In this video, we are going to show you how to attach the end cap onto the Drain Plus Liner 2.0. For the installation of the end cap on the Drain Plus Liner 2.0, you will need the following equipment. The drain packer or inflatable plug at least one meter long. Ensure you use the correct size for where the end cap will be glued on to the liner. We need the drain plus liner, the calibration hose, brake cleaner, tape measure, marking pen, sandpaper, a spatula, scissors or a knife, and the pressure regulator and pressure gauge. And we will need EPROS silicone glue. If the liner is 100 millimeters, which can stretch up to 150 millimeter, it is very important that the end cap should be 150 millimeter. For personal protection, you will need gloves and also goggles. For this installation process, you will need two operators. The liner is divided into different sections. A is 40 centimeters long and this will aid the filling in the wet out process, after which it will be cut away. B is 10 centimeters. We then have the first gluing area, which is five centimeters long and is marked C. We then have an area between the two gluing areas, which is called D and is 20 centimeters long. Finally, we have the second and last gluing area, which is marked E, and again, this is five centimeters long. Ensure that these markings continue all the way around the liner. This will help when you are roughening the surface in the next step. Now, we must prepare the liner end cap. This end cap should be one meter long. Turn the first 50 centimeters inside out and make the markings for the two glue areas. The glue areas should be the same as on the liner, five centimeters wide, 20 centimeters apart. Once these markings are complete, all the way around the end cap, we can then commence to roughen the surface with the sandpaper. After roughening the surface, then clean the surface using the brake cleaner. After thoroughly cleaning the glue areas, unfold the end cap back. Before we can apply the glue to the glue areas on the liner, we must also roughen these surfaces using the sandpaper. As before, once the roughening is complete, clean the areas for the glue with the brake cleaner. Take the packer and insert it into the drain liner. Ensure the center of the packer covers the two glue areas. Now inflate the packer to bring it into contact firmly with the liner. Do not over inflate which would cause stretching of the liner. In order to ease the application of the glue, raise the packer off the table. In this case we use two small pipes. Now put an even line of glue around the two glue areas which have been marked. One operator can hold and rotate the liner while the second operator 
applies the glue. Using the plastic spatula, spread the glue evenly around the entire area of the liner. Repeat this on the second glue area. Deflate the packer and remove it from the liner whilst holding the liner to ensure that it doesn't come into contact with the table or surroundings. Take the liner end cap and fold back the end of the end cap up to the line showing the first gluing area. Pull the end cap over the liner, inserting the liner until the markings on the end cap align with the markings on the liner. Insert the packer back inside the liner and inflate it. The liner has to be pressed against the end cap without any wrinkles or folds. Be careful not to overstretch the liner. During the inflation process, ensure that the liner end cap does not move on the liner. Now the curing time for the silicon glue starts. This has to be a minimum of 24 hours at room temperature. After the 24 hours cure time, deflate the packer and remove it from the liner. Check the glue areas ensuring that they are fully cured and fully attached to the liner. After this, the installation of the liner end cap is complete and we are now ready for the wet out. The wet out procedure will be shown in a separate video.